Hello aspirants. Today we are going to discuss the monthly wind up of the legal current affairs of the month of March. So multiple important legal development has taken place in this month. So let's see what's there for us. Supreme Court has given its decision on Chief Election Commissioner Act 2023. So a very disputed act came into the picture. The name of the act is Chief Election Commissioner and Other Election Commissioners Appointment Condition of Service and Term of Office Act 2023. So this is the disputed legislation which removed Chief Justice of India from the selection panel for selecting the Chief Election Commissioner. We all know Election Commission of India is considered to be an independent body and responsible for conducting free and fair elections in the country. In which the selecting the Chief Election Commissioner, we must have Chief Justice of India. This is what our country thinks. Now, last year, Parliament has introduced this act and removed Chief Justice of India. And now only Prime Minister, one Union Minister and one Leader of Opposition will be there in this election panel. So this is the issue. Now, multiple issues has been raised in the Supreme Court when the PIL was foiled. Now, the three prominent issues are the constitutional challenge. So the act which has been challenged here is section 7 sub clause 1 of this CEC act which says that it is contradicting with the Anu Baranwal judgment which the Supreme Court has given. Whenever there is a vacuum in this filling of the post, the selection panel must consist of the Prime Minister, the Leader of Opposition and the Chief Justice of India. So this is very very significant whenever it comes to the appointment of Chief Election Commissioner. And the third is restoration of judicial authority. Now, it is very significant that we know under Article 141 of the Indian Constitution, the doctrine of precedent has been set up. So, whenever there is a judgment of the court, the judgment of the court is binding on all the lower authorities and the executive and the legislature. So, these are the three prominent challenges, issues which have been raised through PIL before the Supreme Court. Supreme Court denied all of this challenges mentioned in the PIL and they said that the general elections is very very close and giving decision in this particular act will definitely hamper the election procedures as it will take time. The matter was filed in January and later on the court rescheduled it for the April but now court has said that they will not entertain this matter. Supreme Court has given their remarks on politicals, politicians right to politics. Now this is with respect to the Odisha BJP person. Now, in this case, it has so happened that Supreme Court has decided against the imposition of a bail condition. So now a bail condition have been put up against a politician which was barring him from engaging in the political activities. Now, the case titled is Shiba Shankar Das versus State of Odisha. And in this case, Odisha High Court has imposed such bail conditions and Justice B.R. Gavai and Sandeep Mehta of Supreme Court has said that they are overturning this bail condition because politicians also have certain fundamental rights and it will be violated if they are not being allowed to engage in the political activities. So this condition cannot be sustained because this is in direct contradiction with the fundamental right. So Seva Shankar Das, who is a member of the Bharti Janta Party, uh, the allegation has been put against him because he has been facing the multiple criminal cases and Supreme Court has quashed and set aside this bail, bail condition which has been given by the Odisha High Court. UP Board of Madarsa Education Act 2004 Four, Allahabad High Court has given a very very prominent judgment. They have considered UP Board of Madarsa Education Act 2004 a violation of secularism principles. So we know that secularism is the basic feature of the Indian constitution. It is also mentioned in our preamble. There are five important elements mentioned in the preamble. I am sure you all know it. I will just reiterate. So there are five elements called democratic, republic, sovereign, socialist and secularism. So these are the five primary elements of the preamble which justifies the values and idea of our constitution. 
so that is what been cited by the Allahabad High Court stating that this is in the violation of the secularism principles and therefore they are considering it to be unconstitutional. So basically whatever it will come against the basic structure of the constitution that will be held as unconstitutional. So there was a division bench comprising of Justice Vivek Chaudhary and Justice Subhash Vidyarthi. So they have deemed this law which is ultra virus of the constitution and they have directed in furtherance to the Uttar Pradesh government that they should devise a scheme for integrating the madrasa student into the formal education system. So this is one of a very significant act a step where they are trying to inculcate the board of madrasa or the students involved in this board to the formal education system and this will also improvise the level of education as stated by the court. Also the court has also said that the state government's decision to survey the Islamic education institutions and the formation of special investigation team back in October 2023 to investigate Madrasa's foreign funding was also relevant to dive deep into this matter and the judgment has been stemmed because a PIL has been filed by a person Anshuman Singh Rathod challenging the legality of this act and saying that the management of this whole act is done by the minority welfare department including the both union and state government and therefore the primary issue is to inculcate the formal education system so that the specific element of secularism shall be removed as stated by the court. Custodial torture cases, Supreme Court has given a very strong remark in this area. So a stricter bail approach has been devised by the Supreme Court. So Supreme Court has mentioned that we will have to adopt a stricter approach in the cases of bail where police officials are involved and the matter is of the custodial torture. So we know that there are multiple offenses like custodial torture, custodial rape, custodial harassments. So in this cases, whenever the word custodial is used, it means that certain offenses or that particular offense have been taken place in the custody of the police. Yes, it may sound surprising, but yes, there are certain offenses which have been conducted in the custody of police itself. Maybe it is a harassment, maybe it is a rape or maybe it is a torture. And in fact, the torture is prevented under Article 20 of the Indian Constitution, specifically under Article 20 sub clause 3, where self-incriminating practices have been debarred by the Indian Constitution saying that it is a proper violation of the fundamental rights of all the citizens. So in that light, Supreme Court has taken a stricter approach in the terms of granting bail in the cases of custodial torture. So the bench has reserved the High Court decision which has granted bail to police official and they said that the gravity of the alleged offense is very high and granting bail in such cases without a due consideration will be a gross violation of the justice. So court has also invoked its jurisdiction under Article 136 of the Indian Constitution which is a special leave petition and they will address this exceptional nature of the custodial death cases which is particularly involving the police officials. And the decision is also majorly influenced by the precedents which has been the prior judgment of the Supreme Court in this case of State of Jharkhand versus Sandeep Kumar. So where court has adopted a stricter approach while granting the bail in specifically in the cases of custodial torture. So the likewise court is trying to do the same in the present case and therefore they have reserved the judgment of the high court. Removal of Arvind Kejriwal as Chief Minister. So this is the PIL which has been filed in the Delhi High Court and Delhi High Court has rejected this PIL. Now this is a very very hot topic. We all know that Arvind Kejriwal has been summoned by the Enforcement Directorate multiple times and later on arrested as well. The matter is with respect to the liquor policy case where ED has claimed that there is a relation of the chief minister in this case where he has taken bribes. Now the matter is the constitutional question is can a state function without its chief minister? 
Now another question is can chief minister functions even while being arrested and can his office function while he is in the jail so these are the some prominent question which we will want you to answer you can drop your answers in the comment section what is your opinion and now the court is considering court has rejected this pil stating that unless and until a proper decision of the court comes into the picture it will be wrong to decide on such matter and to remove a chief minister which is a due constitutional post now it is the court has also said that judicial intervention in such matters is not likely to be put upon because this is a matter which needs to be decided by the parliament technically the governor or president shall be involved in this matter and they shall give the decision whether to be removed the chief minister or not because the functioning of the state is an executive matter so that is why judicial intervention will be violating the separation of power as carefully devised in article 50 of the indian constitution so this was the concern and the division bench including chief justice manmohan and justice manpreet pritam singh arora so they have discussed this petition and they have cited the absence of any legal prohibition in this specific matter so that's what court has said that there is a failure to demonstrate a legal impediment so one of the primary reason is that there is a failure for demonstration of any legal uh, error in this specific issue and that is why court will not intervene purely on the executive matter and therefore they have forwarded it for the executive action and thus pil has been rejected by the delhi court so this was all for the round up of the month of the march and with this i would also like to tell you a very exciting news with which you are coming up in the month of april 18 19 and 20 we are bringing summer boot camp so if you are confused about pursuing career in law this is a very right event which you should pick and this will be happening at our get set law centers in mumbai gurugram jaipur and bangalore so you will get the description link in the comment box and you can check the details and i will highly recommend every one of you to subscribe to this event so this was all for today if you have any questions any comments please drop us in the comment section and we will definitely address thank you